The following episode is brought to you in large part by the awesome people on our Patreon. You can become a patron yourself by going to patreon.com forward slash red light library. For just one dollar a month, you can get access to the show ad free and a day early with a custom RSS feed you get upon donating. And if you would like to support the show even more, $3 a month gets you access to our monthly series, Going Deep, in which we review a full book-length item, erotica novel, non-fiction stuff about sexuality. We're going to just cover as much cool stuff as we can, and you can get in on that, supporting us and keeping us up to date on, you know, hosting fees and whatnot. Patreon.com forward slash red light library. Become a patron, support the show. Oh, and I'll send you a sticker. How about that? Warning, the following podcast contains adult scenarios and sexual situations. Also, I'm not using the soundproofing on my mic right now, sorry. If that's not legal for you or something you're not into, I suggest turning back now because this is an erotica review podcast after all. Now, uh, hi, stop the music. Hi, this is Gavin editing in the future here. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up. Today's episode isn't a downer. But we do go a little bit more negative than we have been lately. I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on that. So if you're wanting something, you know, poppy and fun and stupid and we love the book, I would advise checking out Fuck of the Irish. That was a really fun episode. I would advise checking out Psychic Raptors and Lust or uh, some of the other books I recommend at the end of the broadcast. But just want to let you know, this is basically... Grace and I telling you how not to write an erotica book because, dear God, this person claims to be a linguist but does not have any control of the lingua. Uh, (laughs) So yeah, you'll see. Here we go. Welcome back, dear patrons, to the Red Light Library. I'm joined once again by Grace, who I have decided to torture by accident. (laughs) With a book I found for free, because I'm broke as shit. Consider supporting the show at patreon.com forward slash red light library. The, t- the title we're talking about today is Stellar Sexual by Carolyn Benes, I think. There's a little accent on the S, and we can't figure out what that does to the S, because we're not linguists. It says Latin extended A. Benes. The thirtieth letter of the Czech alphabet, Fucking... written in the Latin script, or oh, it's in a few languages. Or there's le- uh, Latvian. <laughs> this is <coughs> excuse me. This is well as well thought out as the book we're about to review. Fucking. Let me just subject you to the fucking first paragraph and let you, the listener, decide what's going on here. I got like I'm not kidding you. This is the first part of the fucking book so what happened in the end was i got so sick of space travels i started feeling that not even sex could fill my life with enough joy to carry on like this or maybe it wasn't the actual space travels but you know just having to work or more specifically having to flog stuff to flog means to sell by the way i've had i've spent enough time living in the south of england to have picked up all the slang words you may now see on all the pages that follow oh jesus christ so, so works in verbal language. Lots of people start their paragraphs speaking with the word so and a comma. I find it irritating when I listen to stuff, even though I do it a lot. It's kind of a mental thing to just give you more time to think about what you're going to say. A lot, and by a lot, I mean literally the third paragraph in the story, it's so common, starts with the so, comma. One paragraph actually starts with three S's and three O's. So she was like, so this, what's wrong with this book, Grace? (laughs) Everything. Oh my God. Listen. Literally everything. I've given books crap for doing a couple of things wrong, but there's some, there's something at the core. There's some heart to it. Have you ever done everything wrong? (sighs) literally just no right thing you just never made a good choice in your life here's the thing i would not if this was an author who does not speak english natively Mm. i we've had that before i would not be harsh on it if it was an author who it's their first book or that's the only one they wrote (laughs) 
Snowball and I Fucked Frosty, the very first episode of, the, of this show that was ever recorded, was not structurally well written, but it was over something interesting. Uh, this book is fundamental. A, no English teacher on the planet would let any page of this book go without at least three markups. Because the author does gender as a woman on Twitter, so I'm going to... I'm gonna go with that pronoun. She does write like she's talking, and it's so fucking infuriating. There's so many garbage, useless things that are used in verbal communication as signifiers to get you to listen to the person, but don't work in fucking text. So anyway, uh, uh, that is to say, shit like that is completely pointless. It has zero... You could cut probably five pages of this book out by just deleting garbage uh, little fragments that are just tacked on. I mean, I still have emotions, of course, but I guess I feel it much less than anyone else. And, well, it shows, too. Some people think I'm weird because I don't get embarrassed in certain situations or because I don't immediately go, Oh, so cute! when I see a kitten. I'm not... I. It's not that I don't find them sweet. It's just why the heck about it. And all right already that was a paragraph about her talking about an alien cloud embracing her she had just had the most monumental orgasm of her life she and still thinks about it to this day by the way it she still has little aftershock tremors from it and it changed her as a person but then she's like i still have emotions I think one of the things that first pissed me off, like, I started getting actually, like, upset with this book was the the comment. Oh, and there was one more thing. And I'm not quite sure how to say it without sounding a bit silly. So I'll just say it. I am very, well, sexual. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Why is there a comma, well, comma in there? Yeah. Uh, this person, Carolyn Bennis, claims to be a linguist on Twitter. Even if it, they are a linguist from another fucking language, as, like, if she is Puerto Rican, living in London, she claims she lives in London, which I... Ugh, uh, you can claim anything on the internet. A lot of the use of English slang in this story feels like someone who's watched Doctor Who. Someone from Midwestern United States watched a shitload of Doctor Who, and they start saying, mate. A lot <laughs> and they say bloody yeah it's, it's like when someone becomes an anime fan in the span of like three weeks and they start answering the phone saying moshi moshi like it's not <laughs> that's an a it's not cool and b it's insufferable because yeah. they're and it, it's a little insulting there's a difference <laughs> between enjoying something and attempting to be a part of that thing in a way that is disingenuous you're forcing it. And this book is forcing this person's ability to write. Uh, yeah. Quite hardcore. I, and I really don't want this to sound like I'm being mean for mean sake, but this is a fundamentally broken story. It made me angry to read it as an English major. You are not an English major, who, and, but you read a lot. <laughs> yeah, I read... Well, lately I haven't been reading as much like fiction, but I do read a lot of like papers for school especially when i'm doing projects like i am now and i read a lot of really clinical and and i write a lot of really clinical papers where it's just dry and all about the facts and stuff but y'all i can't get through this like i'm i don't usually read this shit with any kind of emotion like, I'm not reading it to get off, but this, like, made me really mad. I could barely get through it. Actually, to be honest, I didn't get through it. I got about, uh, let's see, 6% in on my Kindle app, and then <laughs> skipped about 67% of the book to the last two and a half pages. It should be, I guess, full disclosure on this one. It is available for free on Amazon right now. It is free. Fire sale. <laughs> 
If you'd like to show your support of the Red Light Library, you can do so quick and painlessly by going to iTunes or wherever you get your fine podcasts and dropping a review and rating for us. It really helps the show show up in search rankings and whatnot, which is awesome. If you want to follow us on social media, we have a Facebook page at Red Light Library and a Twitter at Red Light Library. I'm most active on Twitter. The Facebook just kind of gets episode posts. If you'd like to get them there, get them there. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Red Light Library. Not just for donors. I'll be posting blog posts about random stuff I think about or encounter in the erotica and porn world in general. Uh, If you would like to support the show financially, but you don't have to pay anything, audibletrial.com forward slash Red Light Library. Get a free month and a free audiobook of your choice. Support the show and get an awesome audiobook at the same time. Audible's fantastic. I've said this a hundred times now, it feels like, but I'm never going to stop saying it because I love Audible. Thank you so much for your support. You are fantastic. It's a very common thing, as far as I'm aware, for erotica. Erotica authors who write series, they'll make the first book in the series free Mm -hmm. to get you to, like, hook. And there are two other books in the Stellar Sexual series. And here's the most infuriating fucking part of it. The description on Amazon is actually kind of, it's what got me. And it wasn't, oh, this is free, we'll read it on the show. Mm-hmm. I saw, the, I looked up comedy erotica, by the way. That's the search term I used. And I got stellar sexual. It was like the 15th thing down or something like that. And the description talked about this woman who's a linguist and she works for this corporation that's in space. And they send her around, and she has to kind of smooth over PR problems on planets and stuff, be it involving uh, taking a spanking from a certain higher-ranking individual or uh, being a model in an erotic uh, erotic photography session meant to be sort of a PR campaign to get the corporation engaged on that planet so people buy their shit. Uh that sounds fun, like an, a, a sort of like episodic sci-fi goofy sex thing. That's, yeah. And the cover's really weird. It looks like a, a lost Doctor Who companion um, staring at like a supernova. It's just like a chick in a jacket with a skirt and like jeans on underneath or tights. And then like a really, 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 really flared out. Emmett Hubble space telescope image that's meant to look kind of like woo. She, I just realized like the the like cover page or whatever yeah. of the book where it has the title and her name and stuff underneath it also has an also by Carolyn Benes. Yeah, there's three section st- and there's too many books. There's three stellar <laughs> sexuals. Rule, uh, uh, Hungry for Love, The Cuff Buffs, Pictures of Sophie, Chinese, 25, Needs a Room and a Spanking, The Noose and the Climax, The Island of Pleasure and Bitterness, The Lord of P, The Woman Whose Little Fetish Helped Me Get My Pretty Revenge on the Corporate World and Became Happy and Famous, In the Punishment Room, The Wendy Fairfax Chronicles, First Lesson for My Roommate, The Wendy Fairfax Chronicles. Usually you put like four or five books there, not your entire catalog. Well... I mean, I'm not even, that's not what bothers me about that. What bothers me is she spent a lot of time writing these books, and unless they get better, which I have a strong feeling that they don't, um, she feels like, listen, I, I'm not here to judge. I am a little bit, but. Now, we're, there's judgment happening here. Let me just light the judgment candle Any of y'all quick. have seen American Idol. When they're doing the auditions and you get that one person in who like their mom told them that that they were fantastic for their whole entire life. And then they get up in front of Simon Cowell and Simon Cowell's like, you're terrible. Like, I literally (laughs) want to cut my ears off and eat them. This this is what this kind of feels like. See, here's the thing. We don't. I uh, like I said before, I don't bag on things that like are kinks. I don't subscribe to. Yeah. I don't bag on things that are written for an audience that I am not. Like thirty thousand page long historical romances that have one sex scene in them, and it's like it fades the fireplace kind of situation. That's not stuff we review on the show because none of the people I know, including myself, give a flying fuck about what uh about what Hermione and Eduardo are doing in the shitty, like, Edwardian England. I mean, I do read historical romances. Like, I really like the Poldark series, but I just, 
This is not, this is fundamentally from the rule basic yeah. rules of English you learn in high school, primary school, whatever you call it. The basic stuff you need to write an essay <laughs> for a college course that's 100 level is violated constantly in this. Even comma just splices. to write it in high, for a sophomore English class sophomore. in sophomore <laughs> English class in like high school, you would get fucked on this. Ah, uh, yes. Spankings. Do you reckon it's only us humans that have the concept of slapping someone as a punishment? Come to think of it, it seems like a pretty logical thing to think of, no matter how many eyes or tails or stomachs you have. Or... If you're going to write a first-person piece, first person is used to put you in the, f the shoes of the character. Katniss Everdeen, you are in her head. You, like, the Harry Potter books don't go first person, but the narrator is influenced by who is talking about it. Like, yeah. the character is key. I don't remember the name of the protagonist in this book. I Did they ever tell you the her They name? might not, but we also didn't read the book all the way through, so I'm not going to dock points for that. But I am going to say... Whenever a character in a first-person book gets shy inside their own head about something, that's fucking stupid. Like, if it's part of the character trait that they're shy about sex, cool. But I'm in their skull right now. Yeah. I don't need, well, um, haha, <laughs> I mean, like, parts. I don't need to hear, yeah. like, the shit you say in casual conversation to cover up the fact you're talking about sex. I want to hear that she is embarrassed of sex. Or I want to hear that she likes this thing. There's a lot of flowery language as if this person is trying to get past a censor or something. And then you cut to the lesbian sex scene and there's something about her cute butthole. Like, it just... <laughs> yeah. Here it is. A short while later, my face my face arrived at her buttocks, and I was wondering whether I should just go for her pussy straight away, or whether I should try and touch her very neat-looking butthole. Like, that's the exact same tone, but she's not going... <laughs> she's, like, not dancing around shit. And it's not just in dialogue that the character dances around talking about sexual stuff or swearing. It's in her head, and that's the thing that fucks me the most. If the character didn't like talking about sex in person, that's fine. But, and I didn't pay for it, but I'm not buying your book because I want to read about someone who tiptoes around some shit and says, um, well, anyway, I mean, so. And it's one thing to put that in, like, actual dialogue. Yeah. Like, she's actually saying these words, but you're in her head, and it's like, the whole book feels like dialogue. But then there's actual dialogue. Some of which goes on for entire pages without any, like... Yeah, and she'll put, like, little quotes in the middle of the paragraph like she's thinking it to herself. Yeah. But then, but, like, you can't, it's really hard to to tell what's going on. I highlighted a section. This goes on for over half a page. On my phone, at least. Have your boyfriends ever touched you there? Most of them have. Yes. It's just that I've always felt silly when they do. Why? I don't know. I always feel silly about my butt. Do you like it when I touch you there? Um, well... I still feel kind of silly. Again, this word. Okay, but do you actually feel like like the feeling? She hesitated. I guess. Yeah. Can I put my finger in your butt? Yes, no. Like, <laughs> that was the conversation that was happening here. Now, there was some character building. We were establishing that the, the, the person she's having lesbian sex with is self-conscious about anal for some reason. She's had pushy boyfriends in the past. Uh, this is building a little bit but uh, this was one request i couldn't but immediately comply with when finally both of us were pretty much completely naked she turned around on her back and i lay lied down on top of her i, I love lesbian virgins exclamation mark is a sentence that i actually enjoyed in this but that's all that's it I don't even think i got to the lesbian sex scene oh and the end of the lesbian sex scene has just like a one a one enter space and then, so, coming back to planet Earth, and specifically to Ray now, like, bye. 
Yeah, she there's does a lot, that a lot. There's a lot of rapid scene transitions. Where there's not a page break, there's not like a little set of stars just in the middle of the page to, tell, to show, exactly. tell you that you switched scenes. There's not a transition sentence. There's not even a fucking transition word. <laughs> I I remember like, well, I just saw the word pussy lips. <laughs> but, they just pop out at you, don't they? It just... It was, I was trying to switch back, um, but. It was frustrating to read. And I, oh, will, I, will, yeah, the... I will say this. There's one little hint that the writer is actually a linguist. And that's there's a Puerto Rican character who uses uh, not English words a couple of times. Or she might just know. She might just have Googled. Spanish. Like, hey, what's the word for erection in Portuguese? And then like, Did you say Puerto Rican or Portuguese? Portuguese. I didn't mean to say Puerto Rican. He's Port- They're not the same thing. He's man. from Portugal. <laughs> Yeah, or like so with the thing with the another just I the it was the second third page on my phone, <laughs> and it's just she switches from talking about like her job and this new planet that they're going to, and how about how they have to be like extra cautious because the organisms on the planet the the society on the planet really hasn't been studied and then just bam i was in my room about to go have a shower and it was one of those beings that i suddenly felt behind my back like just no just no warning i thought my phone glitched yeah it's like cloud atlas where that fucking pretentious ass writer just goes jumps like there's a little warning on cloud atlas for amazon where it tells you Page 38 to 39 are right. That's not a publishing error. The author has chosen to act like there are missing pages in the book. Uh, this, is, this isn't this is an intentional thing on her part. She just tried to go to a flashback without doing anything to signal a flashback. Yeah, I just... The whole it's thing... like we're reading a screenplay of the story and they took out all of like the character stuff. And the stage directions. And the stage directions. And what we got was a really weird narration. <laughs> it's no Stranger Things, okay? <laughs> wow. Okay, so I think that's going to be that neither of us recommend this book. No, I don't. If you do want to read something sci-fi that's sexual and funny, I highly recommend going and listening to our episode that Jackie and I did on Captain Future and the Corn Dildo from Outer Space. That was a fun one. Uh, we've got Psychic Raptors and Lust. That was one uh, Jackie and Stan and I did for Dinosaur Month, but it has some sci-fi themes in it. That was pretty fun. These are fun books you can go, and you can spend money and support authors who make quality products instead of getting a free thing that frustrates you and throws your entire evening out of whack, as it has with Grace and I. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for listening. You can support the show by heading over to patreon.com forward slash red light library. Just take a look at it. Um, people who follow us at er, people, who, patrons at any level, starting at $1 a month are entitled to listen to every, uh, the way I've set up our Patreon is anyone who donates at $1 or above gets access to an RSS feed that's tailored for them that will allow them to listen to the red light library without any ads. Like you will never hear me mention, a product again unless it's me just going like hey i tried this thing today it was pretty cool not being sponsored by it uh so you'll get no ads anything i cut for time especially near the end of the month when i'm running out of upload limit here on libsyn you will get on patreon and if you donate at i think it's three dollars and up you get access to our patreon only show going deep in which we review book length erotica once a month Something actual, like, novel length. Not just these sub-100 page things we do on Red Light Library for time and for, quite frankly, interest. Because if this had been if this had been over 101 pages, Grace would have left. She probably would have punched me and she would have left. I would have been like, fuck <clears throat> you, I'm going back to my little asshole lizards and trying to force feed them. I want to point out, asshole is, not a, mod- is a modifier of lizard. It is not a proper noun in that sentence. So yeah, yeah they're pa- just dicks. Patreon.com forward slash red light library. And if you would like to support the show while I'm choking to death, uh, if you would like to support the show without, you know, any money involved, consider going to audibletrial.com forward slash RLL. That'll get you a free month and a free audiobook of your choice on audible.com. Audible is a online audiobook service that allows you to listen to awesome books anywhere on your phone, tablet, computer, car, maybe, question mark. 
you can do it. Audible is awesome. I've been a happy customer since June of 2013. I'm not just flogging this product because it can potentially make me money to keep my show going. I'm flogging it because I enjoy the actual product. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Fun. See you guys next week. You can say bye here. Oh. Bye. I was waiting for you to say bye here and I was going to lose my shit.